Hey guys, what's up? It's your favorite small tuber, Shakes, and today I'm going to be showing you guys the best Danger Zone deployment perks. Now, if you've never played Danger Zone or you just don't really like Battle Royales, I really advise you to try this because, you know, usually I don't like Battle Royales. I feel like Fortnite and PUBG, all those games, you know, the game is kind of shallow. It's kind of just based on what you find and how lucky you are with your drops. And then the rest of that is kind of up to like shallow shooting and things like that. But CSGO, all the mechanics of the game is just so skill based that it makes Danger Zone inherently just a way more fun mode for me than most of the Battle Royales. So if you haven't played it and you are a CSGO player, I highly recommend you try it. Now, for the point of this video, the deployment perks. Now, there's a bunch of different ones to go through a lot of people don't know which one to choose some of them are better early game some of them are better late game but you know there's just a whole lot of variety in what you can choose and depending on what kind of player you are and how skilled you are at the game itself so let's just jump right into it the first one is exo jump now exo jump if you don't know it gives you a considerable boost in how high you can jump which is pretty useful at least you'd think in practice though, it seems, at least in my testing, to not be that useful, especially on black site, there's a lot of fences and buildings and things of that sort. You can jump a little bit higher, but you never really, in my quote-unquote testing, I've never really been able to jump over those fences and those obstacles that would really be useful if I could actually get over them. So overall, I don't really think Exo Jump is that good. However, on Sirocco, the desert map, if you don't really know the difference between the two, when the map closes in, it usually closes in on a centerpiece that's like this massive building and there's a bunch of different holes and stuff that if you're able to get to the top of it, it seriously helps if if you have exo jump because then you can just jump from part to part and you have a really good vantage point but outside of that if you're not going to survive long and if you're not playing on sirocco i really don't recommend exo jump because of how many other great options there are to use Oh, and another thing to note that's actually pretty important, especially at the last part of the game when everybody's pretty close together, Exo Jump actually does make a considerably different noise when you jump because you can hear it every time you jump. It's a little bit like a spring sound, so if you're trying to stay sneaky and you jump up accidentally, everybody's going to know your position, so in that sense, it's not the best for being sneaky. Just a little bit of a side note I thought I'd pass to you guys. Anyway, and now for the second one, Parachute. This is useless, don't use it. No, I'm just joking, but overall, Parachute just isn't as good as the other options in this list because, you know, there is some verticality on these maps, but overall, you're not going to be jumping from Skyscraper across the map just to hit a 360 no-scope, at least not all that often, so overall, I really wouldn't recommend you use Parachute. And now for Health Shot. Now, Health Shot is actually one of the best ones you can have just because Health Shots are really scarce and you're really going to want to conserve them because they're a thousand in the store, which is pretty pricey for just healing you up a little bit, but overall, having two Health Shots from the very beginning is pretty useful, especially when you get at the beginning, everybody has glocks and small guns and smgs so from long range you're going to be taking in a lot of chip damage and therefore you're going to need to heal up or else you're just going to be stranded with less health and be at a disadvantage however if you think you're good enough and you will last to the later stages of the game without dying and if you don't know dying will remove any of these perks so you can't keep them through death if you think you're going to be able to survive till then most of the time by then people will have the supply drops they're going to have the strong guns they're going to have the ops the ak's the auto snipers they're going to have all those things that can kill you really quickly so overall the health shots are not going to be that useful because you're not going to have time Time to heal up. You're gonna have time to fight or die. And on that note, the taser. Useless. No, but for real though, the taser just really isn't that good. You know, you can get a knife or a melee weapon really early on and that has pretty much the same effect as the taser, except it can open boxes and it has multiple uses, so overall it's just not that good. And the only real use of it anyway is just to run around tasing people at the beginning of the game, and at that point you're probably not going to be going for a really good chance of winning. So yeah, let's just move forward. And now for the shield. Now this one's a little bit of a dilemma just because the shield is actually a really, really important thing to have, especially late game, because having a defense from behind so you can't really get attacked from behind unless they get a little bit of a headshot in that little sliver of headshot area that is available on the shield just having that defense is super super useful but overall it's not going to be that useful at the beginning of the game most people are going to have smgs and pistols which really aren't that good from long range except for doing chip damage so overall having a shield won't save you that much in an early game in late game however when everybody has long range guns like the ssg and ak's and stuff it's going to be pretty pretty powerful to have just because you don't want to get sniped randomly from across the map by someone who gets a random one shot to the back of your head so it is pretty strong in that sense but using it as your deployment perk just really isn't that good of an idea because it's only 500 to buy later so you could just wait and just get a different deployment perk that's better and just buy it eventually later when you have enough money because it's only 500 dollars and not exactly that effective early game and now for the firebomb now it's a little bit of an easier choice than the shield because it just isn't as useful in as many situations. And again, is way more useful late game than early game. In early game, everybody is really spread out, nobody's really taking cover, nobody's really being really tactical, so using the firebomb isn't going to be as effective as just shooting someone in the face. But later, when the storm is closing and there's not that many places where the enemy can be, using the firebomb to push people out of positions is super, super effective. It is CSGO after all, so being able to take away a positional advantage is incredibly useful, but overall, you're not going to be needing it at the beginning 
winning the game. If you really need it and you think you're going to push into a place where you know where the people are, then you can buy it later on and it's not that expensive, especially with the other lethals that you get, so I wouldn't really recommend using this as your deployment perk. Now in my opinion, the C4 explosive is probably the weirdest one and just demands a little bit of a different kind of mindset. Usually when you put this thing down, you're kind of forcing yourself out of a position and kind of telling everybody where you are because you have to be there to plant it so they're going to know the source of where the plant is and then therefore they're going to know where you are so overall in most situations this isn't that great to use. However, if you are a big brained player and you recognize that you're going to be deployed in the middle of two people who will probably pinch you and try to push you out or try to aggress really quickly, then this might be the 1000 IQ play for you because you can plant it and that'll force people to get away so you can escape scot-free. If there's just a lot of people crowding around you at the beginning and maybe a lot of people want to go to industry and shipping because they think it's going to have a lot of loot and you're dropping there then yeah it can be really effective at driving people out so you can escape without being killed because if you escaped after being killed that you'd, you'd be hacking don't don't hack but overall, outside of that very specific circumstance, I don't really think C4 is that useful, but if you realize that there's a bunch of people crowding around you, it can be a last-ditch play at a genius move. Now, Armor Helmet is probably one of the safest bets you can have because, you know, it's not exactly the most expensive, it's only 500 to buy later, so you can buy it if you want to later, but if there's a bunch of people around you, kind of like the C4, it can be even more effective because you're going to have a massive leg up on other people because, you know, having an armor and a helmet when you guys are just fighting with pistols will give you a massive advantage because, you know, you're not taking as much damage. If they get a headshot on you, it won't be the end of the world, so overall, having the Armor Helmet is super useful when there's people around you or you play a little bit more aggressively from the get-go. Outside of that though, it's pretty common to find and it's only 500 to buy, so I don't know if this is the best choice. But again, if you are in any of those situations, then it can be a pretty safe bet and can guarantee you having a good rest of your match. Now it pains me to say this, but the drone pilot tablet isn't god tier. Believe me, I used to be a drone pilot tablet enthusiast, I'd use it every single match. And there really is just one primary reason which holds it back from being so good, it's downtime. When you use this perk and you hop into a drone, it brings the drone from halfway across the map, so you have to fly across the map, find whatever you want to pick up, it's usually pretty buggy too, you pick that up, you have to bring it all the way to you, and then you have to drop it down, and then get out of the tablet, and then walk all the way over to it, and then open it up. In that time, you could have found just as many, if not more items, and you could have got to a better position as well. Not to mention, if you are not using the tablet, it's super, super easy to sneak up on you. Especially if you use it at the beginning of the game, where, you know, SMG crates are actually useful. Then usually the storm is going to be closing in, or people are going to be trying to raid your hex, so you're just not going to have a very fun time. Sad to say, but for now, the drone pilot tablet is just a gimmick. Now for the final two, bonus explorer money and bonus wave money. These are my favorite, and I'll explain that in just a little bit. I'll go over bonus wave money first because it's a little bit simpler. Every time, you know, the bombs go off and the storm closes, which happens every, you know, couple minutes, you're going to be getting a 250 extra payout on top of the 750 to make it a clean $1,000. Now, if you survive pretty long, you know, you're not that bad of a player and you don't die that early, it's probably going to happen two or three times, which roughly equates to, or exactly equates to, 500 or 750 extra dollars, which is pretty useful to have. And you might say the health shot is 1,000 and the shield and the armor and helmet is 500, so you're practically just getting the same amount in money. What's the point of getting that over something that you can instantly get? And to that, I have to say it's versatility. You never know what's going to happen for the rest of the game, so you're going to really need to be able to adapt with your money instead of having one very specific perk that does one very specific job that might not always help you as the game continues. More on that in a little bit. Now finally for my absolute favorite perk, the bonus explore money. Seems kind of lame but I use it every time and it just gives you a massive advantage. But anyway, in essence, every single time you move into a new hex, there's a timer of about 10 or so seconds by which if you survive and you stay in it for all that time, you're going to get an additional $1,000 for exploring that hex. As you have this perk enabled, then it'll be at $200 instead of $100. And you might say, oh, that's only $100 extra dollars. I have to cross two hexagons to get one pair of AirPods. That is a bad deal. But no, my children, the math goes way deeper. If you're not just standing in the middle of a random building and using your drone pilot tablet to pick up SMG crates from across the map, then you're probably going to be moving around at least a little bit, you know, maybe two or three hexes per minute or two minutes, which can equate to, you know, 200, 300 extra dollars per minute, which can really, really add up. Just from that alone, and also my testing, it gives you way more than the bonus money payout, so overall, this is the best choice if you want to get extra money. And overall, just moving around the map a lot and exploring a lot is just a really good practice if you just want to find new items, you know, new medshots, 
all these different items that a lot of people haven't picked up and just gives you a little bit more of an understanding of the map so you can just get better and play better for your next match. If you just play slightly adventurously and you explore a little bit, you're going to have a lot of money and just racking up a lot of money in mid game and end game when you're going to be needing to buy a lot of health shots and shields and armor, especially late into the game when you're going to be fighting multiple people. You're going to need to have the money to buy these things when you need them because if you don't, you're going to be in a massive disadvantage. If you start out in an engagement with only 60 health because you couldn't afford to buy another health shot or you don't have a shield so they can snipe you across the map from any angle. Every single round of Danger Zone that you play will be different, and if you subjugate yourself, is that the right word? Uh, doesn't appear so. Quash. So if you quash yourself to one playstyle, you'll probably be bamboozled by the end of the game just because you aren't ready for whatever the game brings. If you go with the money perks, then overall you're just going to be more ready to adapt so you can better fit the situation with the funds that you get. I know it seems like I'm overanalyzing this whole deployment perk thing, and I am. But yeah, that's what you gotta do when you wanna become the best. And yeah, that's pretty much the best and worst deployment perks of Danger Zone in CSGO. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel because, uh, uh, subscribe. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys again and, uh, peace.